this flying saucer idea. Uh, and they didn't know, because the U.S. government had treated Nikola Tesla so shoddily that, as if they considered him nuts. And they wouldn't listen to anything he said. It's just that crazy old guy comes in here wants wants to sell us or on these ideas, these wild ideas about ships that you know go you know so fast and so forth and defy gravity and and so all of their experts who were MIT people mostly uh, just slandered Tesla up one side and down the other and managed to convince the government that he was nuts and so so the Germans they sent their man to cultivate. Tesla's friendship. Uh, they had a guy named George, George Sylvester Fierick in New York, came from a very well-known intellectual family, and Fierick cultivated Tesla's friendship, persuaded him along the lines of helping uh, with the German developments. And uh, I don't mention this much in the book, but I've, I've uh, some I put in on this. This is so you discovered a German connection. With yeah, Tesla. there's definitely. It, Tesla got the the morning paper, uh, the morning German papers at the at the German embassy every day, you know. So he'd gotten pretty tight with the German embassy because he sold stuff to the Germans in the past. He offered. This is prior to the war, so he he doesn't feel that this is some kind of treasonous act. Yeah, see, in the World War One in 1914, Tesla offered his cert turbine to the U.S. Navy, and they weren't interested. So he sold it to the German Minister of High Marine. Uh, uh, in 1914. So they were interested. They bought his turbine. And uh, then in World War II, he offered all this stuff to the government. He offered the U.S. government ELF technology in 1914, 15, along in there, 17. Which they're using now yeah. as part of. He uh, offered them that technology yeah, the then, and emergency. they turned it down, you see. And Eventually, the Germans got hold of the technology, and uh, they were using it in World War II. Uh, they had submarines that used Tesla's oscillator to give them a 30,000-mile range. And uh, These were the electro-U-boats. Yeah. They had a Tesla oscillator that was driven off of, partially off of thermodynamic and electromagnetic energy gathered from the Earth's field that oscillated at uh, harmonic of the Earth. And uh, they uh, used a gas to drive a little uh, piston that powered uh, some electric uh, inductors that cut the lines of force and generated electric current. This was a, a, a generator that Tesla developed in the 1890s and uh, run by, uh, more or less, by gas, you know, uh, basically liquefied air. And run he was through a Tesla turbine? Yeah. Well, uh, no, you run it. Uh, well, he probably used his pumps to compress uh, the air in one stage of it. But what he was using was the same thing that Lindy filed patents on soon after la uh, Tesla's laboratory was burned to the ground, which makes you wonder. Another coincidence. Another big coincidence. And the Germans were, were storing huge quantities of liquefied air during before World War I. Uh, that's, what that's were they going to do behavior. with all that stuff, sure, you know? Sure. So that was their U-boat stuff, you know? And uh, the uh, they were already planning on this stuff. Boy, it's, it makes your hair stand on man to think how how they moved into action so early, you know, to, to get this big thing going. But uh, So how does uh, this tie into uh, the P2 project with Von Braun and um, uh, Tesla's technology? How did Von Braun... Um, Acquire what he needed to uh, uh, develop this. This well, they they knew that, you know that, they they had questions, you know, about Tesla's claims. So naturally, they wanted a proof of concept. So that's what they did at Los Alamos from 1936 to 38. However, I know that they didn't get all the technology uh, because the ship I saw in 1953 still had had the bug in it of precession problems. And you felt that it looked like it was lost. <laughs> yeah. It had a precession problem, which if they if they had gotten all the technology from Tesla, which Tesla had, they would know would have known how to solve that problem, and so would the U.S. government. None of them paid any attention. If they'd looked in Tesla's document, documents from the 1890s, there was the, the answer on how to stop that precession problem. 
and uh, I'm, I mean the saucers would do this when they hovered and they couldn't see anything. Everything's doing this outside, you know. Sure. And when they move fast, it's just a mere wobble, high frequency wobble. But uh, Tesla just bear, uh, just merely did some experimentation to figure out how to solve this problem. And uh, apparently, now, prior, prior you you felt that this precession had mostly to do with the uh, the movement of the electrical uh, discharge, the uh, brush discharge, brush which discharge. Is used uh, the brush, uh, the brush changed, discharge is just like the Earth. It's like the aurora borealis. You have a brush discharge in the Earth. The Earth draws in the the tubes of force, and it's also the place where a huge current is going into the Earth from the sun. And uh, so there's a huge electric current going from the sun through frozen magnetic lines of force in space through the Earth and back to the equator of the sun, where it goes with the return current. And uh, that's what imparts the momentum to the Earth around the sun. So this is documented and proven by the scientist Johannes Alfen, the uh, Norwegian scientist, who carried on some of the work of, that Alfen did was based on the work before him of uh, uh, Christian Birkeland, who, uh, who apparently was a Tesla nut too. And I believe that the reason they got into this area of research was because Tesla's dynamic theory of gravity, which was never published, had somehow leaked out. And so this it is looks something, like... This is something you've been attempting to reconstruct uh, through available text. The reference that you quote uh, is his lecture before the uh, uh, immigrant uh, welfare. Um, what, what year was yeah, that? Yeah, and he apparently had made the same announcements many years before. but. He talked about and he it. He actually used the term dynamic theory of gravity. Yes, he mentions this in a number of places in his uh, in his writings, and, and the stuff was published. Uh, however, he intended to publish it, but he never did, and he worked it out in 1893 and 94, which was I got the papers that he wrote just before that, and that were part of his lectures in England, in New York, and Paris, and so forth, and in those lectures was this information that basically went into his dynamic theory of gravity and then a few times at later times he would include little bits of the theory in there and at one time he released a lot of information on the theory in poetic form and uh, so uh, basically what Tesla said was that in the 1890s was that uh, the brush discharge brought in the tubes of force, and according to J.J. Thompson, when the tubes of force are drawn into a conductor and dissolved in it, it imparts momentum because the tubes, the space contains the mechanism for momentum. Well, Alfin proves that most of the momentum of the solar system is in the planets. The sun has practically none because most of its momentum is being imparted and conduct or carried to the planets. So this According idea their, of centrifugal force uh, creating some, you know, after baloney. Is they, uh, even Einstein said there's no force at a distance as far as gravity is concerned, and and he didn't even believe in the ether physics. But uh, basically, the theory is is that there <laughs> there are all these onion-like layers in in, for instance, the solar system of the sun's electrical energy. And the planets are traveling along certain lines it's of this. It's almost like a toroid, toroid yeah. shape. And the planets are driving along it, and the and the momentum they possess is brought in by the magnetic, by the electric current and the tubes of force, which are on the Earth. The aurora borealis, uh, this Birkeland, had said, "Well, there's no way that we can have these huge magnetic currents on the ground unless there's a current of billions of amps flowing into the Earth in the North Pole." And so the 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 aurora is actually a brush discharge. Now, the aurora borealis is not the same as the aurora australis on the other end. It's a cloudier thing. That's positive corona versus negative corona. Negative corona. Then Tesla invented his highest form of his coil was the single terminal coil, which he discovered, and he said, it's my way of creating DC current through induction. 